In this video, we'll be adding validation to our application. So without validation, users could enter some nonsense data or even try to submit an empty form. So in an ASP.NET Core application, validation rules can be defined by adding or applying attributes to our model class, right? So we can add some annotations to our model class. And in order to use annotations, we need to import the annotations namespace. So at the top of our models file, we're going to type using system dot component model dot data annotations. And now we can add our annotations. So first I'm going to add a required and if an input is not entered, then the user will see receive a custom error message. So let's enter our custom error message and let's say, please enter your name. And I'll copy this a couple more times, one for our email. one for our phone and one for our error message. And now I can modify these. So I'll put a space in between for better readability. And here I'll put, please enter your email address. And additionally, I can specify that this is an email address field. Okay, so this will ensure that it is a valid email address. Not only do they have to enter an email address, it has to be valid, meaning it has to have the at symbol and a dot com or, uh, or an extension. Okay, so that is our email. Now let's put the space. And this one will be phone number. Finally, let's say, please specify Yeah. All right, so as noted earlier, we're using a nullable bull for the will attend property. And we're doing this so that we can apply the required validation attribute. Now, if we had used just a regular bull, then the value received through our model binding could be only true or false. And I wouldn't be able to tell whether the user had selected a value. But with a nullable bull, it has three possible values, true, false, and null. And the browser sends a null value if the user did not select a value. And this will cause our required attribute to report a validation error. All right, so this is a great example of how ASP.NET Core blends C-sharp features seamlessly with HTML and HTTP. Now let's check to see whether there has been a validation problem using the model state that is valid in our home controller. So here on our HTTP post method, I am going to add an if statement to check if the model is valid. So we'll type if model, model state dot is valid, then we're going to return our view. So let me let me delete this. So let me move this and put it inside our if block. And then let's put our else. We're just going to return the view. All right, so we're just checking if our model state is valid and then proceeding as normal. And if it's not valid, we'll just return an empty view. All right, so this controller base class provides a property called model state. And model state provides details of the outcome of our model binding process. So if the model.state is valid, then the property will return true. 
and then we'll know that the model binder has been able to satisfy the validation constraints that we set in our model. And when this happens, we will render the thanks view as normal. So we can add the validation helper to our RSVP form. So let us open that up. And here right beneath our form element, our opening form element, we can add a div and give it an ASP dash validation summary and set it equal to all. And this has to be inside double quotes. So this will display all the validation summary to our users. And we're just placing it inside a div element. So the validation for the ASP dash validation summary attribute is a value from an enumeration called validation summary. And it specifies the, the different types of validation errors that the summary will contain. So we have specified all, which is a good starting point for most, if not all applications. So let's now run this program. Let's click on run, start without debugging. And let's click on book now. And if we try to submit our form without entering any information, it lets us know that we have to enter these values. So let us now enter some values. And you can even specify more of granular controls for our validation, such as you can um, force the user to have to enter a 10 digit phone number, right? So there are many different variations and that you can specify um, for your validation. So if we try to submit this form as is, it lets us know that we have to specify an option. So let us click on yes and submit our form. Thank you, Dexter, right? Click on view the list. And now we can see that Dexter has been added to our list of attendees. All right, so let's go back to our editor and stop our program. So at this point, what we want to do is highlight our invalid fields. So in order to highlight to the user the fields that are incorrect, we can add a class to our fields. So let us go to our name field and in our input type, let us add a class and let's call this class input dash validation dash error. And now we're going to add a style sheet to our project um, that will contain CSS styles for this class. So the convention of ASP.NET Core is that inside the root folder, let me minimize some of these here. Inside our root folder, we have a CSS folder. And in this site, that CSS folder is what will contain most of the styling for our project. All right, so we're going to add a new CSS file. So we're going to create new and let's call this styles.css and let's now add our custom styles. So let's add, let's select our input class. So input dash validation dash error, which is the name of our class that we just added and remember to to select a class in CSS, we use the dot notation. If you're selecting an ID, you would use a hashtag. All right, so let us set this border and let's set it to one pixel and let's give it a solid color and let's call it, let's give it a red. And then let's also give it a background color. So remember, because we're using tag helpers, we're able to add these field validations using CSS. So let us just add another one. We can add a field validation dash error, and we'll set the color for this. Now let's have a field validation dash valid rule. And here we'll set display to none. Now we'll add a validation dash summary of our errors. So summary dash errors. And we'll set our font dash weight. Let's set this to bold. And also let's give it a color of red. 
and let's add one more validation summary dash valid and let's set this to display none if it's valid all right so these are our css rules and usually i write my css like this for better readability however you can have everything in one line if you so choose so i could move this up so that everything is in one line now in order for these rules to apply to our rsvp form we have to link our css style sheet to our form so i'm going to link it and it has to be linked in the head section of our html document so i'm going to add a link and it will be a style sheet and we have to define the path to our css directory so we'll do a forward slash css forward slash styles dot css all right so now we've added our style sheet to our rsvp form let us now run this program and test out our new styling so let's run without debugging and if we click on book now and try to submit without adding anything we see our css at work where everything our validation errors have been bolded and they are now red and also our fields have a red border outline okay so that is how we'll add validation to our document so if we enter some values here if we try to submit and here we see our email validation at work our email address is missing and at so our validation is working um, nicely.